And the Ondo State Governor, Loki Aedatiwa, on Thursday led a delegation of top government functionaries on a private condolence visit to the Ibadan residence of his former boss, Governor Rotimi Akiridolu, speaking shortly after the meeting, which was held behind closed doors. Governor Aida Tiwa described the demise of his former boss as a physical, as a personal and a national loss, stating that the late SAN was an accomplished Nigerian who had contributed in no small measure to national development. The governor said that Akiridolu's departure will be greatly missed by not just well-meaning indigents of Ondo State, but indeed all Nigerians. We are here, the government, under my leadership, government of Ondo State, on behalf of the good people of Ondo State, to pay a condolence visit to the immediate and extended family of our former governor, Arakunrulua Rutimi Odunayo Akiridulu, SCNCO, and who passed on yesterday uh, in his private home here in Ibadan. Yes, we have to do this because he has always been our leader, uh, a courageous one for that matter, one who, who has governed on those states in the last uh, six and a half to seven years with, get, with great courage and with so many legacies that he has left behind. He's an exemplary leader, a courageous one, a leader that believes in fairness, equity, and justice. A senior advocate of Nigeria who speaks on national issues so that adjustment and proper decision can be made concerning any issue in Nigeria. We pray that God will grant the families the fortitude to bear the irreparable loss and for those of us that he has left behind to be able to uh, emulate some of the values, you know, the sterling qualities that he's known for. In the meantime, hours after his swearing in by uh, swearing in as the seventh civilian governor of Ondo State, Loki Aedatiwa, announced five fresh appointments signifying a new dawn in politics in the state. Already three aides of the deceased governor had resigned aware of the handwriting on the wall. It is not yet clear how the political landscape will be and what the relationship of the new governor and the State House of Assembly will look like. For now, Governor Aedatiwa has declared three-day mourning period in Ondo State between the 28th and 30th of December to grieve over the demise of his former boss. Daily Trust reporter in Ondo State, Tosin Tokwe, gives an update. Yes, so currently the atmosphere is, uh, you know, pensive everywhere. Everybody is, uh, watch out everybody is wearing a pensive mood. And uh, as I'm talking to you, like you have rightly said, the governor, that the substantive governor, now look at you that you are declared a three day mourning period for the late uh, former governor, uh, Rotimi Akiri Dulu. And uh, even the governor's office, uh, the government house everywhere is currently deserted and uh, people wearing mournful look, uh, you know, to mourn the departed soul. Uh, that's Governor Rotimi Akiri Dulu. And uh, even the flag uh, has been thrown in uh, as mask just to honor the former governor of the state. Yes, uh, you know, uh, from fillers, uh, or people are describing, describing the governor as an icon who uh, left an indelible mark, uh, especially in virtually all the sectors of the state. More importantly, when you talk about uh, the issue of security, he was one of the brain behind the formation of the uh, Southwest uh, Security Network Agency, otherwise known as Amotekun Corps. You know, uh, that local security office was established following the perennial insecurity situation in the Southwest as it related to incessant kidnapping, banditry, and uh, armed robbery. So, as a result of that, with the formation, people have been talking about his uh, legacy, which has left behind, and people 
and to know that they have left uh the governor the the, the former governor who died have actually left an indelible he has actually left a big shoes for his uh, successor to wear uh, it's to people of the state uh, it's not surprising because most of these uh, cabinet members who are throwing in their resignation letter were mostly people who you know uh, were against the the, the the deputy governor before he eventually became the governor so and as a result of uh, interviews we did earlier uh this was gathered that most of them were jittery uh, of what becomes the governor and eventually the eventuality happened with the death of the governor so them throwing in their resignation letter to many residents of the state uh it's not surprising at all and uh, with what people are saying that the governor might actually reshuffle the cabinet as i'm talking to you uh we've not been able to gather that fact if there is going to be a reshuffle of the cabinet but if that as it may be uh it is normal in the political setting uh when a governor died and another one emerged so many of those who have worked with him especially the lawyer one who want to tether in their resignation letter and you know and find another business why some set of new people also comes in and in politics you know uh look at that who has become the governor and he wants to also work with people who are fit people who he knows that who actually also fit into his own agenda not forgetting the fact that even when he took the oath of office yesterday he promised to also uh you know revitalize some of the policies of the governor and then don't forget they were both uh they both a major steam ticket and he also promised you understand to work by those policies and uh as a result of that we think as from next week we should start seeing some of these as it's occurred from the states